Oh my gosh, the reveals and Raju, I love Raju now. I love Raju. Hey, what is going on everybody? Ali here and welcome to my One Piece Chapter 841 review to the East Blue. I'm gonna figure out why they named that uh, later on, but this chapter was just, it was just a lot of fun to me, for, for me reading it and stuff. I think in the beginning, it was like a flashback within a flashback because uh, it, it shows Sanji still in the mask and everything. And uh, it goes to a flashback of him in the kitchen with all the chefs and stuff. And they're saying like, Sanji, you can't be in here because you're royal and stuff. And so he like he makes something, and it turns out while he was making it and he was bringing it to, to a certain somebody that we figure out like who it is. Um, it is pouring rain out, a complete like crazy thunderstorm. People are saying, Sanji, get inside. Don't run out here because it's like it looks it looks really bad out. He's running outside and he's like, Don't tell anybody. Don't tell my father either that I'm out here uh, bringing this food to somebody. And it turns out he's going to a hospital. And at the hospital, or like a pharmacy or a hospital, his mother is there. Like, his mother is bedridden. And it's like, that was such a cool revelation that she actually wasn't dead and stuff. And I don't know what Judge was talking about saying, like, that she's completely gone. That maybe that is a stepmother. Or that he actually, when she fell ill or something, he considered her to be nothing. Like, to, to like, not... Be involved with the family or something, and if that is the case, it is to the point where, I mean, I hate Judge, but it is to the point where I want to jump into the panel and find Judge and just beat the shit out of him. The nurse, I guess, was sitting there saying, like, oh, Sanji, what are you doing here? Sanji made food for his mom, and the nurse was like, I have to, I would have to try it first, so she tried it, thought it was terrible because... Uh, cause Sanji dropped it, it got rained on, it got crushed on, everything got mixed together like bananas and then some other savory like actual food and stuff and, and Sanji's mom is like, oh what is that? And the most adorable panel is Sanji like holding onto his shirt, like blushing, saying like I hope she likes it and everything and, sh and his mom sees the food and he's like, oh, she's like, oh you made this for me? And he's like, yeah, I made this for you. She tries it, thought it was great. The face on Sanji was just the cutest looking thing. And she asked him if he's going to come again tomorrow. And he's like, yeah, I'll come. And then it goes back, I think, to to the present flashback, I want to say. Like, the, the flashback before this flashback goes back to him with the, uh, with the mask on and everything. He's sitting there. And Ninji, Ichiji, and Yonji have, like, the key to their to the cell and everything. And they open it, beating him up and stuff. And... The thing is, Reiju on the side is just crying. She She's tearing up and everything for Sanji, and it's just the saddest thing to see. And when they leave, Reiju is always helping Sanji. And it's like such the coolest thing, like a brother and sister um, relationship like that. Like she's always caring for him and stuff. Nobody else cares for him except for her. And it's just such a sweet thing to see. And I didn't really know, I didn't really think this was, this was a thing, but Reiju is actually like a little Sundari saying, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not on your side, I, I just don't want to be, uh, the next target. Sanji doesn't care, he's okay with it, and he's like, Reiju, I, I want to be a chef. And then Reiju's face, don't, t Reiju, Reiju's face, like, don't tell me that shit, I don't want to know that, which I thought was, like, hilarious, and... You know, the pain and everything ensues of what's going on. And uh, it turns out German 66 is going over the red line stuff uh, for like a war and everything. And Judge is all uh, occupied. And Reiju is like, this is the perfect time for you to escape. Reiju is the one that helped Sanji escape. What? I feel like I, I expected it. I feel like I expected it. But like still when I heard it, heard it and saw her helping him escape was just like really exciting and really just awesome, like awesome to read and everything. It was just so cool. And so Sanya was about to leave and Judge was actually came down and everything. So then Judge is like, so you're trying to escape and stuff. And Sanji's like, you can't, you can't make me uh, stay here. I'm going to escape. I'll fight you for this. And he's like, this is perfect. Even though I despise you and you bring shame to this family and stuff, you're still my son. So I couldn't really uh, get rid of you. I couldn't kill you or anything. So this is like the perfect opportunity. I'm not going to stop you. Get the hell out of here. So then Sanji starts crying. Reiju is on the corner watching. She is crying. She's bawling. 
her eyes out, and it's so heartbreaking, like, to see this whole situation that Sanji's in, like, his father literally has no care for him to the point where he will let him just leave and just get out, saying, like, it's like a crazy world out there that you know nothing about and stuff, but just leave, go and kill yourself, and, like, I'm like, what kind of father is that? I hate him so much! Sanji is, like, on the battlefield trying to, like, maneuver and just get out, and Reiju just looks at him, turns him around, you see her face, she is just drenched in tears, just saying, get out of here, and somewhere in this big world there are gonna be people who care about you and stuff, and it just, it just reminded me, brought me back to what Robin went through leaving her island, her home, with, uh, with D. Sol, uh, what's his name, Jaguar, Jaguar D. Sol, or I think that's what his name is, saying, like, he's saying to Robin that there are people out there who will care about you, nobody is alone in this world, and Reiju says it to Sanji, and it's like, I get chills down my spine when I first saw that panel, it was just, it was insane, she's just saying go out there, she is like the only one who really did care about him, saying just like, go, I, I know there's nobody here that likes you or that cares about you, but go out there. There will be somebody who love, who will love you, who will care for you out there. And ugh, just like such a sad scene. I think Sanji's backstory is one of the saddest ones in the whole entire Straw Hat crew. But par none. Bar none. And then it goes to Sanji and Reiju talking to each other in the present time. Now it goes to the present, from the flashback to the flashback to the present time. Saying, like, you shouldn't have come back. She still cares about him so much. And I think I'm going to do, like, a theory video uh, probably in the next few days about uh, some, some stuff that went on in this chapter and stuff. So, um, and then after that, it goes to Luffy versing Cracker. 11 hours into the fight, and Luffy is bloated as hell, he, like he ate all the biscuits, and Cracker is tired because of making all the biscuit, uh, soldiers and stuff, and it turns out that Luffy's just, Luffy is like, I'm gonna eat the biscuits, um, to the point where you're gonna lose your stamina and stuff, and then Cracker's like, your stomach's going to burst before that, and it's just like, fun, it, it, I thought it was like really funny. Some people might complain about it saying it was stupid, but I thought it was hilarious. Is Luffy gonna give, is his stomach gonna give out? Is his stomach gonna burst? Is he gonna give out before Cracker loses stamina? Or is Cracker's stamina gonna live out till Luffy, like Luffy's stomach bursts and he can't, he, he can't do anything anymore? And it's just like a waiting game now of who's gonna be like unconscious or like knocked out beforehand. And it's just like, first of all, uh, Luffy, I was wondering like, he, he uses, like, uh, Kongan on, like, the Cracker, um, the Cracker soldiers and stuff, and I'm, I'm thinking, like, why didn't he just start eating them in the beginning? And first of all, if, if it was this easy for him to, like, eat them, like, now, why didn't he do it before? And before, the Kongan, like, barely broke or cracked or shattered the clone, uh, the Cracker clone, so I'm thinking, like, is he using Armament Haki on his teeth? To eat the Cracker Soldiers? I don't know. But otherwise, like, that's how the chapter ends. It was an amazing chapter. I give it like an 8. No, not an 8. Forget 8. I give it like a 9.5. No, actually, I know. I'll give it a 10. 10 out of 10. It was a great chapter. I loved every minute of it. Um, so yeah, that's it for this review. Like the video if you did. Like the video if you liked the chapter. Like the video if you liked anything I had to say. If you agreed with anything I had to say. And comment down below on your thoughts of what I said. If you agreed with anything I said. Comment down below on your thoughts of the chapter, what you think the next chapter is going to be about and everything. And subscribe to my channel for more reviews, vlogs, unboxings, live reactions, and theory discussion videos, and things like that. So, gentlemen, stay classy. Ladies, stay sassy. But most importantly, everybody, you got to stay a little nasty, all right? So, peace and love, and I will see you all later with the next video.